Hello, and welcome to the TBI podcast, Those Bored Individuals. What is up, guys? And welcome to a brand new episode of Those Bored Individuals! Ah, well, summer is in full flush, at least everywhere else on the planet. I mean, seriously, when, when is the sun coming out? I don't even like the sun, I'm waiting for summer to come along, like, I'm seeing clouds right now, when is summer coming along? Pretty warm down here. Yeah, you can take our sunlight if you want. For you. I did no, no, no. I I don't I don't specialize in heat. Sorry. <laughs> you should know this by now. I specialize for the cold. Yeah. Ah, so, how has everyone been since the last podcast? Been good. I've been busy. Ah <laughs> uh, yes. Same. How so? I have recently been confirmed for a new job starting Monday. Ooh, nice. So I've been going around at interviews and whatnot, trying to find something. And now that I've finally nailed something down, I've been out all day uh, outfit shopping (laughs) for office clothes. (laughs) Nice. Yeah, exhausting. Ah, uh, don't worry. If you can pull off the Gorian Washimi walk from a Gretzko, then you're golden. Oh, yeah. Oh, God, I'm going to have to study all night for this, aren't I? <laughs> well, who knows. Oh, also, joining us for this podcast, because Michael isn't here, we've got Allie once again. So say hello, Allie. Hello. <laughs> hello, Allie. Ah. Sorry for the late introduction. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> wow, and look at that. You look so, you look great without the Tim Burton filter, so it's always nice to have you on board. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> well, things have been pretty interesting this summer. Uh, college and schools have now been let out, and everyone is at home taking it easy. Lucky for some. Ah, Dudley. (laughs) So, in the spirit of transitioning to summer, I think it's only fair that we talk about what some students nowadays have recently experienced, because normally, at the end of the school year, there's always certain events that are held, whether it be prom, or homecoming, or leavers, parties, and such. So, uh, normally, they only come around once in your lifetime. And it's uh, quite important that to everyone that this event must go well, because one mistake could lead to you having the worst event in your school year. Mm. So, school itself? <laughs> well, I, for one, have a story about how one person ended up ruining my primary school leavers party. Oh. So, not in my high school, because we're in Scotland, we... Ha- the teachers organised a... A leavers dance party. Now, this was to sort of prepare children for teenage life to adult life, and also to teach you some of the Highland dances that probably nobody will ever use again. Yeah. <laughs> so, Rowan, do you remember having a similar event like that in your primary school? there was, but I don't remember much of it. It was thankfully or unthankfully very uneventful. Hmm. Just a typical party, really. (laughs) Well, at my school, the teachers told us that for a number of these dances, we had to be partnered up. It was the first time that many of us 
had to dance boy with girl, partner with partner. And so most of us were assigned one boy was to dance with one girl. Now, I of course had my crushes back then, but I was paired up with this recent transfer girl who I will be renaming to Bertha. Now, Bertha was all right. She she was a nice girl and all. Um, the only problems that happened was, for some reason, during most of the practice sessions for the dances, some she kept getting sick. And um, so oftentimes she had to rush out to the bathroom to be excused. Now, the worst part about this was that the headmistress at the time looked in on us to see how we were doing because, you know, all of our grandparents are going to be there because, you know, they're the ones who are going to know all these dances. So they expect us to do a good job. So... When it came for the partner dances, uh, I was left standing out on my own with my partner, Bertha, running off to the bathroom. And unbelievably, my headmistress stepped in and acted as my partner. Ugh, it was so embarrassing. It was, all the other students laughed, and I was like, oh, come on, give me a break. And I had to do the whole routine, dancing alongside her, having my, because normally when you're dancing with a partner, you need to be careful of where your hands are raised, so that makes it even more awkward. And the worst part about all of this, the event day is here. Our grandparents are all in the dance hall. We perform the traditional Scottish songs that were lined up, like Bonnie Magina McCall, The Week of Cooper Centipede, to name a few. And then it came down to the dances. For quite a while, we did great. Me and Bertha did the dances as best we could, along with everyone else. All the while, I was going, in my mind, I was saying, don't be sick, don't be sick, don't be sick, don't be sick. And so, sure enough, she was sick. And she, ex and she had to be excused to go to the bathroom yet again. And I was like, oh, oh God, I know where this is going. And because I was so scared of the punishment, if I didn't go out there, I had to go out there on my own, no sign of the headmistress, and all of a sudden, you hear the little click clacks of her high heel shoes, like, Oh, this is my chance to dance! She rushes over to me, once again, and this time, the grandparents laughed. Sounds like... There's that scene in Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire where McGonagall dances with Ron, but you live the experience. <laughs> That's yeah. it! That is exactly, exactly what happened! <laughs> oh, it was painful! The only time this issue got resolved was when one of the, uh, one of the other students from another year was, uh, because one of the other students from another year was taking pictures and videos because, you know, it's just something for the yearbook, I guess. And one of them happened to be a girl, and they stepped in place for me, which helped a little bit, but you couldn't have done this earlier? Really? So, I have to be embarrassed are you, twice. Are you, yeah. yeah. Are you sure the reason that Bertha wasn't going to the loo was because... She was actually a big birther from Mario and she was going down the plumbing to get to the mushroom. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Well, um, no hard feelings, Bertha, but 
Thanks for that. I've got some pretty fond memories of that Leavers party, so... Cheers. Ugh. <laughs> what about you? Were uh, Leavers parties any similar? The one we had a few weeks ago, well, I had one not recent, just recently, um, but it wasn't that bad. But obviously this time, the only thing was more entertaining was the fact that the teachers were drinking. <laughs> And this is the first time anyone's ever witnessed this. Also, the students were allowed to drink because, you know, we're all over 18. Sheesh. <laughs> so, it, obviously, I wasn't drinking anything because I don't like like that. Same. But um, it was just an entertaining watch of drunk teachers. <laughs> I'm not sure I can drunk top drunk teachers. <laughs> I mean, the closest thing we got was... Our head teacher at the time, uh, speaking with helium, uh. <laughs> because there were balloons at the tables. Uh, students were bringing them down and sucking on them, and eventually, the head teacher did so as well. He stood up, did a speech on the microphone. Like, I'm not so much sure I've of this, uh, everyone, but there are several of them in these balloons. <laughs> So, yeah, there's that. Oh, we love a head teacher. We love a head teacher with good humor. <laughs> yeah. It, it just reminds us of a teacher that we had in middle school. Um, to be fair, I thought she was a pretty good teacher. Apart from, she was rode so fast on the board that I couldn't keep up, <laughs> and like would walk from one side of the board to the other while writing, and she was extremely energetic. But then other times. She would just sleep through the lessons, <laughs> and it was just weird. Uh, and then one day, uh, and she, she was just a really strange teacher. Like, sometimes she would just be not bothered. She'd be sleeping through the lessons and just be like, shh, just be quiet. And other times she'd teach at, like, super speed and be super hyper. <laughs> and we were like, okay, a bit weird, but it's okay. And then one day she just wasn't there anymore. Oh. And... and apparent and i was just like oh well that's a bit sad she was quite a funny teacher until a few until i got into the high school about five years later and it turns out apparently she had alcohol and drugs in the classroom jesus christ and she got arrested oh god no, i think it, she got caught with drugs in the car Oof. um and then the classroom and found a bottle of wine in the drawer jeez oh. and that was an interesting revelation about five years after having this teacher. Real, yeah, realizing yeah. that her core personality was from her doing cocaine or whatever off the desks. Yeah. <laughs> That's not chalk. It's... <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> what about you, Dudley? Any particular school events that stick out in your mind? Uh, well... Well, Nate, I don't think when I left primary school there was anything specific. I think it was like, they might have had a disco or something, but but I did have, we did have our leavers ball for secondary school. And uh, so I was like, yeah, I'm going to go to that. Like, I don't plan on doing any dancing because I'm like, I'm not very brave when it comes to dancing. I, don't, mm. I haven't actually had to be in a situation where I danced with anybody either, which is like interesting. Right. But, um... Other things, it was a good night. Like we got some good photos, and like it was pretty good. And but one of the things that was kind of funny at the time is obviously everybody's going there and getting like their drinks and things like that. And back then, I wasn't really big on like drinking like soft drinks either. So I wouldn't like drink Coke or anything like that. It would usually be I would either be restricted to water, tea, and maybe ginger beer here and there. Right. And so. I went to the bar and they're like, what do you want? And I ended up getting a, a pot of tea, like if you stayed at a hotel. So so I said, I'll have a tea, please. And the guy's like, tea? So, like, so wait, did yeah. he actually give like, you like a whole teapot or something? He gave me a teapot, a tray, <laughs> loads of sachets of stuff. I think he just milked it because I asked for tea or maybe he was just like, but it was kind of like, I don't think anybody else noticed, but like, funnily enough but in my head it always stuck out to me as being funny because it was like yeah, I'll be little pinky finger out and you'll just sing <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
the sound of that. Like, Fancy music in the background. Yeah. Probably the most sort of sophisticated <laughs> person there. Everyone else is just sitting in the corner, so then you're just sitting in the corner with your tea. <laughs> <laughs> that's how you. That's how you stand out at these events. I think I might have had a, they might have given me like a jar of sugar cubes as well, for all I remember. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> Oh, yes, go and have a dance, good sir. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, Ryan, anything interesting? I had a very boring childhood when it comes to school. It was just your, like, school stuff of just trying to survive until you don't have to go back anymore. <laughs> uh, <laughs> was, wasn't any leaving events or, like, a club thing, like, at the end of school where you said goodbye to everybody or anything like that? Um, we went to church and sang goodbye songs. Mm. <laughs> that sounds not, not in a bad way, but that sounds kind of sad. Like, <laughs> just like, yeah. as in like singing the goodbye songs. Oh God! <laughs> goodbye, goodbye, good friends, <laughs> goodbye. <laughs> Yeah, that's something you do at a funeral that's not something you do when you're seeing off your friend in fact now that you, now that you bring that up that that sort of a, interesting one. that sort of thing doesn't happen because everyone in my school went to the same high school so there was no point for that yeah literally I left, I left primary school and there were like two girls hugging and crying goodbye to each other and I'm like, you're going to be going to the same school in a couple of months. Like, I was, I just, I guess I was just mean-spirited. Like, I, I understood, like, why they were sad, but it was at the same time I was like, nah. <laughs> I was like, I'm not going to see any, some uh, of these people again. Like, well, <laughs> I guess to sort of fill in the gap, I do want to bring up some obscure school events because maybe it was just my school, but we had so many made-up special days for the students that... Yeah. Because the most iconic one, I think, is World Book Day, where you dress up mm. as your favourite character from literature or something. Mm -hmm. yeah. But some of them were we a bit that. more... Ex some of them, from my younger brother at least, were a bit more obscure. Like, Odd Shoe Day... Really? That's that. That's an event. And one other day, you go in with your pajamas and nothing more. Like what? We have pajamas. You're making pajama this up. Day, I that you are see <laughs> what? I never had the pajama one. Thank God. Oh. <laughs> I did the odd shoe day. If it, imagine if I just did odd sock day, I bet I would have been like, meh. What's different? <laughs> <laughs> You know, I remember the thing is, everyone bought pajamas for pajama day. It's not like you just went in your pajamas that you were wearing. Jeez. Yeah. From what I recall, like pajama day was like a charity thing, so yeah, you'd you come in with like a pound money. coin. Uh, yeah. yeah, I guess if it was for something like Red Nose Day, that would make sense. But I yeah, honestly thought, like I honestly thought my brother was just making this up to you know go in like in his pajamas so he wouldn't have to get into his uniform or something it was just the school festival <laughs> <laughs> and uh honestly probably one of the best days of my entire middle school still because they had a uh, dance revolution with four boards Ooh. and i won every time for about 10 in a row like nice <laughs> um uh, had, they also had candy floss that you had to pay for, but I, but they also had. Do you know if you use a candy floss a lot, the actual like sugar kind of caramelizes on the inside, like a solid yeah. sugar ball. <laughs> uh, and they always chuck them to the side, going to be in the bin, and I just nick them. Ugh. <laughs> no, no, no. They were lovely. They were just. It was. It was just basically caramel. It was like clean and it was nice. It was actually really good, <laughs> and. On the f the first year, I had all of them to myself and just kept I kept them in like a little paper bag, and they were really good. Uh. It was just like a it was just like crunchy. It it was good. <laughs> it's just like solid, just a solid block of candy floss. <laughs> you know, 
I do okay. have now that you think now that you say that I do have a bit of a story surrounding World Book Day. Uh, I'm not sure if I brought this up at all, but I'm just going to bring it up. So, of course, with World Book Day, we celebrate the world of literature. We buy books that are on sale in the school at the moment and dress up as characters from literature. However, one year, I was a bit late when it came to dressing up as someone. And so, my mum decided to dress me up as Percy the Park Keeper. Oh. <laughs> which, which at the time I was thinking, um, okay, yeah, yeah I, I saw Percy the Park Keeper on TV, it's an okay show. So, and he's from a book series, so I guess that counts. But then it slowly dawned on me as I was heading towards school. Oh god. P uh, if I tell people that I watch this show for presumably younger children, oh god, they're... Because I was made fun of for liking Pokemon. So if I told them that I watched this show about a, a grown man in a park taking care of talking animals, I'd never hear the end of it. And yeah. so... And so... Everyone goes to the front of the class and describes, describes what their costume is. And I was fully kitted out. I had... The shirt, the boots, the dungarees, I even had a stuffed rabbit with me. And so I stood to the front of the class and the teacher asked, Okay, Daniel, who are you dressed up as? And I just panicked and went, Uh, Jack from Jack and the Beanstalk. <laughs> because, get away with it? um, yeah, um, the teacher did apparently ask at one point, Are you sure you're Jack from Jack and the Beanstalk? And I was like, um, yeah, because the version of the book I had, he looked just like this. So, <laughs> when you think about it, there are, um, there are infinite versions of Jack from Jack and the Beanstalk. They all look different. So, there's enough books out there for some one of them to look like me. So, there's, so someone out there is like, Oh, I thought Jack and the Beanstalk was this cool, like, green outfit person who climbed the beanstalk, and then they were like, I didn't realise he was just a parking officer with a rabbit in his pocket, <laughs> and then they went, they were scarred for life. It's like, <laughs> so, yep, I got away with it. So, yeah, sorry about that, everyone, but I had to spare myself the embarrassment again. <laughs> <laughs> You're listening to the TBI Podcast. Summer blockbusters. They have quite the reputation, and one of them this year has definitely earned itself quite the outstanding reputation. Doctor Strange and the oh. Multiverse of Madness. Yes. Yes. Jeez. Yeah. No. That's a movie. Yep, it is amazing. Doctor Strange is up there with some of my top favorite superheroes from the MCU, and to see him in the spotlight again was amazing. However, it wasn't just Doctor Strange that we were excited to see, because there are a lot of things in this movie worth talking about. Yeah. One of them being the Illuminati. Yes. Yeah. Hmm. You heard that. Yep. I can't believe they put Shrek in there. <laughs> you, you, you get it? Because we, we want to keep it spoiler free, technically. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was really something else. Just, they appeared in a swamp and there he was. Yeah. <laughs> All star just blaring out. <laughs> yeah. Oh, could... I. I have to. Oh, you're lagging like crazy there, Dudley. Oh. Oxy laptop. Hang on, hang on. Cut this out when it comes to the final product. How do I sound now? You sound fine. You sound all right. Sound all right? Yeah. Should I. Uh, let me. 
go off of I'll be really quickly I'll go off of Discord and go on it again it might do that it might do something okay in the meantime yes <laughs> okay so uh, considering that we're currently off uh, podcast right now could you imagine if they actually did like in multiverse if Strange and uh, what's her name appeared in this one? Like, oh gosh, where are we now? What <laughs> universe is this? Tom, God, he was. <laughs> yeah. Could you imagine? That would have been hysterical. Oh, oh, and looks like Dudley's back. Ah, uh, yes. Oh, you're back. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, I, I think. <laughs> it's like, oh, he's back. <laughs> but wait. <they're... laughs> I think, um, okay, I did like the new Doctor Strange, but I don't think it's, like, I wouldn't put it in my top ten necessarily. Like, it had a lot of good stuff in it. I put it, like, compared, okay, I put it, it's one of the middle ground ones for me. Like, it's better than, I put it in the okay category. Like, I did like it. I also, I also think it was, um, of course it helps if you know the Illuminati, but, like, I think it, uh, I recommend. Yeah, I think it's better if you've seen One Division first as well, mm-hmm. because if you go into it without having seen One Division, it could be confusing yeah. for people. Oh, I can't take it anymore. We can't go in this spoiler free. We have to talk about it in full detail. Yeah, I need to watch it again to fully be able to put it in a tier list. But um, mm. I do think that like. There are some better ones out there, but it is quite a good one at the same time. Yeah. I mean, yeah. there's definitely worse good. ones. Hmm. And oh, yeah. The worst ones are still good, so... Okay, now, for those of you who don't want spoilers, please skip to 3802. So, once again, me and Rowan went into the cinema to see it for ourselves. Yay. Basically, what happens when Doctor Strange meets the multiverse-jumping superhero... America Chavez. You get Wanda going nuts trying to find her family from a different timeline. And let me tell you, when she goes nuts, she goes horrifyingly nuts. Yeah. We just appreciate the fact that in comics, Scarlet Witch is Magneto's door. Mm. Yeah. And we saw Scarlet which killed Patrick Stewart. Sheesh, yeah. yeah. She, without even lifting a finger, well, I mean, she's, yeah, you get what I mean. She somehow took out some of Marvel's all-time most powerful, iconic heroes. De- it was gruesome. Just let me tell you, the moment you know that things are going to get this horrifically gruesome was definitely what she did to Black Bolt. Yeah. Ah, uh, yes. Black Bolt, the leader of the Inhumans, who's famous for his supersonic voice. It can be so loud that a single whisper can make a mountain crumble. So what does Wanda do? She uses her magic to make his mouth disappear, forcing him to scream, blowing his own brains out. Yes. And just the fact that you see the little chunks of it sliding down his head beneath his headgear, it was like, good God. Good golly. (laughs) And the fact that In the immediate following scene, she takes Mr. Fantastic and play-dohs him to death. Yeah. (laughs) Like, you know those spaghetti maker toys you get for play-doh? It was essentially that. Yeah. It was... Oh, God. It genuinely made me swear when I saw Black Bolt happen. I was like, Jesus f***! So, (laughs) because... I, I and was... that was a shock even to me because I was sitting right next to him and I know that Daniel does not swear. He 
He has never sworn for as long as I've known him. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that that in extreme cases that does happen, but good lord, it was like it was like episode one of Invincible all over again. Just well-known heroes being brutally murdered left and right. Ugh. But I think one of my one of the bits that was very comical was uh the the undead the spare dead Doctor Strange that he used to come back and fight, you know, the zombie Doctor Strange. Uh, oh, hardcore. Yeah. Oh, that was hardcore. Awesome, though. Reanimating his own dead corpse and using the spirits of the damned as a cloak. There's no other way you can put that. That is literally how it goes. That's the most metal thing I've ever heard. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's an interesting comparison to like I saw much like Ali, we saw the new Thor film yesterday Ooh. and that was that was good <laughs> like as well like it's hard to say which is better I think I have a, a liking for the Thor films like so yeah, I first time watching I preferred Thor so just mm. first time watching mm. though I need to watch them both again to be able to compare it properly oh I do hope yeah. to see that for I... myself soon yeah I did I will say I liked Ragnarok better than this one, but mm. that but this one is really good still. Like, mm. oh, yeah, Ragnarok has a pretty high bar, so. Yep. Yeah, yeah. So. I would go as far to say that they're almost tied. I'd say. Mm. Mm. I mm. could say. <laughs> well. But. Right, because I watched it in a in a group. I'm not going to say anything about the actual film. But we found out there's kind of like a, a thing of like, there's a, a far end of people, like half of us preferred Thor over the new, over Doctor Strange, mm. and then the other half preferred uh, Doctor Strange. So it was a good, mm. uh, like, it was almost split at 50 50 of <laughs> who preferred the other movie. Well, mm. I'm hoping to see it soon, so I guess for now, all I've got to talk about is Doctor Strange, but. One scene, another scene that I really enjoyed was quite literally the Battle of the Bands. Because when you think about it, Doctor Strange is of course going to have bizarrely creative visuals. And to, to see both good and bad versions of Doctor Strange using literal music notes to fight each other, music... Oh. That literally hurts more than just your ears. Mm -hmm. That was one of my favourite scenes. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. It, it, that's, that, I hope to see more spells like that from Strange in the future. Just, just go all out. Let's, let's see what else you can use as a weapon. Mm. A, a, a random observation I made from the trailer and the film. I don't think... Because there is a dark Doctor Strange in the What If series, mm -hmm. and I wondered if it was going to be the same one potentially, but it's a different version. Yeah, I was I was about to see that myself. There's cause... a point in the trailer where he goes, yeah. "Things just got out of hand," and in the film it, he doesn't say it. So I'm like, oh, interesting. And yeah, when just a random when the when in when Spider Man No Way Home was released and we saw the end credit trailer. That's who I thought it was as well. I thought it was the same evil Doctor Strange from that series. But still, they still found a way to connect What If to the to the main MCU timeline. And we have Captain Carter from What If, technically, as part of the Illuminati. So, yeah, that's always nice to see. Mm. Yeah. Mm. I still... I think that's probably uh, one of my favourite what if episodes cool. as well. Huh. So it was glad interesting. that I was included. I thought the uh The uh, what? <laughs> was I was excited there. Uh walking cliffhanger. <laughs> Are we giving this in? <laughs> I don't know.
Dudley, what happened? A lot of fans of uh, the MCU have pointed out, even though Reed Richards, aka Mr. Fantastic of the Fantastic Four, is part of the Illuminati, a lot of people have pointed out how stupid he was in his brief appearance. The fact that he straight up told Wanda that their most powerful ally could destroy her by talking, yeah. ultimately making Wanda take away his mouth, it was like, Reed Richards, smartest man alive. Um, yeah, I don't think he would have done that. Yes, excellent plan. I think he, I think he underestimated her, like, motives and, like, power. <laughs> and that was the yeah. problem. Yeah. But, he probably but thought, like, still, he would have him on top. This, if this is the same Reed Richards that we're getting in the Fantastic Four movie that is coming in the future of the MCU, I'm excited for it because I've seen this guy in the la in A Quiet Place and I think he might do pretty well. Let's just yeah, hope that's... that he actually does make some good decisions in the future. Let's just assume that the timeline that Wanda kills him, let's just assume that's the universe where everyone's a bit too cocky and overconfident with how they'll yeah. succeed. Pretty much. It's interesting because Wanda's arguably one of the most powerful characters. Like, this kind of proves that, but like, she almost defeats Fathos single handedly, and the, the only way he stops her is to call down an airstrike. So it's like, yeah, she is a threat. And mm. it's like, also, um, if they do a Fantastic Four movie, that'd be interesting because Chris Evans, who plays Captain America, his, was the original. Um, the fire guy? Yeah, the fl uh, the Human Torch. He was the That's Human it. Torch in the original Fantastic Four movies back in the 2000s. So, yeah, there was quite a bit of talk about actors reprising roles from other media. Like, of course, Chris Evans as the Human Torch was a possible uh, candidate. And another one that I don't think a lot of people talked about was Tom Cruise as the cancelled unseen superior Iron Man. So, yeah, th those are... Po but still, those are possible. I mean, the multiverse is definitely opened up now, and considering what could be happening in the background while all this is going on, well, I guess we'll just have to wait and see. Oh, speaking of Chris Evans... I saw Lightyear yesterday. Hmm. <laughs> uh, it's definitely a fun ride. I can definitely, I can definitely see Andy classing this as his favorite movie. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, Chris Evans as Buzz Lightyear. I think it's a pretty good choice. Having Captain, the vo having Captain America voice Buzz Lightyear is definitely a good choice. Has anyone else seen it? I have not yet. Hmm. I'm, I'm still scared. debating whether to see it. Well, I've seen Buzz, one episode of Buzz Lightyear of Star Commander as yes. is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, um, what can I say about it? Um, it makes a lot of references to the Toy Story movies. Like, you'll definitely hear lines in throughout Lightyear and think, "Ha ah, ha ha! I see what you did there." Um, definitely making a lot of references to Buzz and how he fits into the Toy Story movies. And of course, um, he has a robotic cat companion in the form of Socks. Mm. Yeah. I do, a character's growing on me from what I've seen of, which is funny, because like, <laughs> I also, also, it's interesting thinking about seeing this after having because I've seen a lot of I was like you're a star command and Zerg and that is hilarious mm. like then obviously the Zerg from Toy Story 2 is is awesome so it's like it's trying to find them this uh, one looks a bit like bulk <laughs> like 
you know, yeah, the, a bit extreme, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, the Zerg in this movie, um, he takes a bit of a weird turn. Um, I won't say too much, but there's a bit of a reveal with him, and oh. it's pretty outlandish, but I guess it kind of fits with Buzz's story throughout this. But, anyway, the biggest question on everyone's mind is, is this movie better than Buzz Lightyear of Star Command? Well, yeah. Sure, well, this film takes a more realistic and grounded approach to space travel, well, most of the time anyway. Of course, you've got alien plants and bugs to deal with, but if you're wanting more creativity and outlandish designs, I'd say check out Star Buzz Lightyear of Star Command, but at least check this one out for yourselves, because it's definitely going to be an interesting watch if you're a fan of the Toy Story movies. It, this film looks like something that would have come out like in the early 90s for me like in a good way like it's like it's like when it's like in the second toy story when he says oh space stuff started coming out and then people started getting obsessed with space and you could see this movie and it is focused on space like you could see how kids from Andy's world would be like, okay, I'm into space now. And obviously that's why he gets into it. Cause I've, I've heard, okay, I've heard about Andy in this film and that's all I've known about it. I can't, I won't say anything else, but like, it's like, yeah, it is a very down to earth looking kind of down to earth. For lack of a better word. Yeah. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. You are listening to the TBI show. Well, it's that time again for the month's most ridiculous headlines. <laughs> okay. In this month's news, a man receives die or do surgery as doctors in Maryland use a pig heart to tr replace his own. A what heart? Yes, you've heard that right. A man now lives with a pig heart beating in his chest. Oh, a heart of a pig! <laughs> but I've been tricked. Oh no. Oh no. I know this story. The three army surgeons. This is not going to end well. Be <laughs> because three army surgeons like to boast how they're the greatest surgeons in the world. So they cut off parts of their own bodies like their hands, their eyes, and their heart. However, when those organs go missing, they end up replaced with a pig's heart, cat's eyes, and a thief's hands. And let's just say, if the surgeon with the heart of a pig went off truffling and rooting in the ground as a pig. I mean, it's kind of similar to some other surgical stories out there, like... Um, like some of these strange cases where if you, if you're a man and you receive an organ transplant from a woman, you end up doing womanly things, I guess. Nothing. Uh, apparently, I mean, there was that story that the Ricky Gervais show covered about a Croatian lumberjack who started knitting after he received a female kidney. Yeah, I remember that. Um, does this mean um, this person who has the pig heart gets married and their wife says I have your heart and he's like oh well there you go it's like That's, you don't have my heart, pig's heart. <laughs> yeah you have a pig's heart to deal with uh. <laughs> oh, okay. so what are the chances that this guy will start behaving like a pig but is it one of those ones because I know they were doing experiments trying to grow human hearts like that manipulate pig hearts to act uh, just like a humans and then they do use them for transplants but they haven't used it on humans yet mm. probably this is probably the example of the first time doing it yeah. Yeah. so it could be that I mean, basically just being a human heart growing in a pig <laughs> well until we read further into these stories we'll never know the full details okay so here we go with the next headline 
Parents are being warned to be extra vigilant over seemingly fun videos that feature a menacing character with razor sharp teeth. That character is Huggy Wuggy. Oh. Ah. <laughs> ah, yes. Move over, Five Nights at Freddy's. There is a new competitor in town in the form of Poppy's Playtime. Yep. To be, when we, me and Ali were in Edinburgh the day before you turned up, literally every shop we went past had a, hug, you had a Huggy Wuggy plushie. And it was like, oh my god, this game's barely been out and it's already got them everywhere. Yep. Yeah. Huggy Wuggy plushies are appearing in stores everywhere. And let me tell you, kids are buying. <laughs> because I've... There have been several instances now where I've seen very young children with these <laughs> scary looking toys. Like, I remember walking the dog a couple days ago and I saw a little girl, maybe like two or three, with a pink kissy missy with the same sharp teeth. <laughs> and I was like, sheesh. And then just a few days ago, I saw another young, another young kid, same age, and he had a plush toy of the recently introduced and incredibly terrifying Mommy Long Legs. Oh, Mommy Long Legs. But let me tell you, I think this is a win-win situation for everyone. Because when you make a game about a haunted toys factory... The merch makes itself. Yeah, and the fact that kids... Uh, the kids are more than happy to receive this because I think if you go into something and know that it's going to scare you, I think uh, you go into it a bit more understanding. So this game is going to try to scare me. For the next hour and a half or so, I know what to expect. And even if they don't, the designs are creative and... The toys are now everywhere, so everyone's a winner. Well, you know, kids, kids love monsters. And also, <laughs> I think about half the kids out there who have, like, a Freddy Fazbear toy don't realise the atrocities that the actual creatures do in the games until much later in life. So, oh, my favourite toy does that? I mean, like, <laughs> but even, I'm not surprised there's toys because... Even Baldi's basics, I've seen toys for, and it's like <laughs> really, like you know, they're so sim such simple designs, and yet they still made toys out of it. Like... <laughs> well, that's out there. I, it, I will admit, I am thinking about getting a Huggy Wuggy plush now. <laughs> Just depends on how the future of the franchise goes. It was a pretty terrifying plushie in my my house right now so yeah. um, <laughs> it's got like human looking teeth in it all right yeah. so this next headline isn't really a headline it's more just a an interesting observation so someone someone has actually made an invisibility shield really now i find this hilarious because, now don't get me wrong, it does kind of work. Because it's literally just this police plastic riot shield looking shield. And you, mm -hmm. it sort of reflects everything behind you except you. So mm -hmm. when you see it, when you see through the shield, you can't be seen. But the funny thing is... It still looks cloudy, and even so, you may be invisible, but the shield is still there. Like, imagine, mm. imagine what would happen if you brought that out into the battlefield. You just, the enemy sees a bunch of shields tilted, tilted sideways, and just marching around the corner, like, oh, dee, 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 dee. hey, where are they? There they are. <laughs> Yeah, you if see, you tied that with like smoke grenades or something, then that would be quite like good. Because 
you can still see the shield moving. It works, but you can still see the thing that's causing it. How did that get there? Uh. Uh. So I appreciate the effort, but invisibility still has some way to go. Yep. Probably further advanced, like, probably, like, in the military or something. <laughs> probably. All right. It's like the internet was, like, fully functional, like, ten years before anyone else had it. Yeah. Mm. Um, oh, God. This next headline's a doozy. A, oh, yeah? A dog wakes up their owner moments before a meteor crashes into their bed. I kid you not. Apparently, this dog sensed something really bad was about to happen, wakes up their owner, and just as they sat up, <whistles> right into their pillow, this charred, half brick sized, scalding lump of rock that crashed straight through the ceiling. I think I've, I've heard of this one, actually. Good boy. Good boy. Give that dog a biscuit. <laughs> I, there is, there is pictures. There are pictures of this happening. I'm just seeing it now. It's literally this half brick sized meteor. That's how big it is. It's, it's jet, near jet black. It's just lying on this person's bed. You can see the hole that it made through the ceiling. Ugh. What's the dog called Crypto? Crypto. <laughs> yeah. Ugh. Let's hope it's not Kryptonite. Mm. Ugh. Well, um... Oh yeah, funny you should say Crypto because that's another film that's being released this year. Doesn't look all that interesting, but hey, it's... For the kids, and if I was a kid, I'd be happy to see it. Mm. <laughs> well, um, we've talked extensively for quite a bit throughout this podcast, so I think it's only fair that we end this podcast off by talking about something that most of us are really looking forward to. Pokemon Scarlet and Pokemon Violet. They are turning these Pokemon games out fast. Yep. And, I mean, I see this all the time when it comes to Pokemon games that are just being released. But the new Pokemon that are coming out all look amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. (laughs) The internet, alongside myself, has fallen in love with the new pig Pokemon by... The name of Lechonk. Lechonk. I l- that is quite a bold name for a pig Pokemon. I love it with all my heart. Yeah. <laughs> also entirely. Uh, Lechonk is the new Wooly. Yeah. Makes sense how last generation we swooned over the sheep. Now this generation we're swooning over the pig. Um, uh, quick question, does uh, Scarlet and Violet happen to take place in France? Well... Or like the Pokemon equivalent of France? Well, we already had uh, a Pokemon game, X and Y, uh-huh. taking yeah. place in France, in the f- oh. and that was the yeah. Carlos region. So, this film is looking to be Italy, from the looks of things. Or it, uh, it's still up for debate. That explains it. It's either Italy or Spain. By the looks of things. Well, of course, being either Italy and Spain, we of course need to have an olive Pokemon in there in the form of Smoliv. Yes. (laughs) Smoliv is a delight. I love him with all my heart. Well, let's see what all these guys evolve into before we start (laughs) regretting those statements. Or me is also very cute. Ah, yeah. The Pikachu clone of this generation, because everyone needs one. (laughs) And those those legendaries. Oh, yeah. 
The level of detail in this Pokemon game looks stunning. The textures and stuff aren't really good. Yep. So, from the looks of things, this game could be about past versus future. And this could be proven within the legendaries because the legendary for Scarlet looks like an old tribal mythical legend, while Violet's legendary looks like a futuristic mechanical monstrosity. So, it could be that side of the story, because depending on which version you get, you'll be joining an exclusive side with one of the two new stunning-looking professors. <laughs> uh, also a <laughs> Yes. Yeah. They've also, because past and future really helps it to... Well, it, it, it makes you wonder with Legends of Arceus, like, Pokemon that are exclusive for that could be brought forward to Scarlet and Violet, because that's set in old, olden days, and like... Yep. Um, so, all I can say is, until more exotic Pokemon are released alongside Lechonk, the only confirmed Pokemon on my team so far are Quaxley and its evolved forms, and Talonflame. Mm. I don't yeah. think I need yeah. to explain why Talonflame is on the team now. <laughs> <laughs> that trailer that they released most recently is interesting because they showed Pokemon from every generation. Mm. And it makes you think, does this mean they're bringing the national decks back for this game or not? I mean, they might not. But it would be nice if they did. <laughs> that would be quite the task, but it would still be pretty darn amazing. It'd be pretty scary trying to get 100% decks, mm. but oh, probably yeah. still a lot more rewarding. Also, everyone is very curious about what the special theme with this Pokemon game is. Because in recent years, each Pokemon generation has introduced a new way of battling. In generation, f in generation 6 we had Mega Evolutions, in Generation 7 we had Z-moves, Z in Generation 8 we've got Dynamaxing. So, what could be the theme this time? A lot of people have suspected that we could be getting Pokemon of more than two types. What? It's just speculation, but it would be okay, amazing. Speculation. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. It might be it might be temporary, it might be full on Pokemon that exist with three types. My guess is that it could be Pokemon who can switch between two different types. So you could have a fire type Pokemon suddenly becoming a water type, for example. But like for peckles. Yeah, yeah. But until then, we're just gonna have to wait for the next trailer to see if our guesses are correct. Yes. Well Very interesting. we're almost out of time, so anyone wanna bring anything up before we bring this to a close? Enjoy the summer, everyone. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes. While it lasts. Yeah. When it gets here, at least in my <laughs> side. So, <laughs> until next time, guys. See you later. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye.